it's showtime. That's what it says when I go live on here. All right. Should be live. Hopefully the internet's good. Every every time I do this, I feel like the internet is not, not optimal. But just wait a second for people to come in here. I'm muted. All right. Should be unmuted. Can everybody hear me? For the three people that are in here, can y'all hear me? Can y'all see me? Um, it's been a minute since I've done the stream. Well, it's been a couple weeks since I've done the stream. But, yeah, we're here. Just hanging out tonight. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy. Um, just wanted to talk about... Universal stuff. Probably not expecting a huge um, turnout for this stream because it's not necessarily an HHN stream, although we will probably be talking HHN because that's the nature of this channel. Um, and there are HHN things I do want to talk about. But um, the stream is mostly going to be Universal stuff. So uh, changes coming to the parks, the teasers they've been posting across social media. I know it's been interesting to a fair few people but I want to let some people get in here, let some early chats come through, hopefully, and uh, hear me good? Thanks, John. Um, yeah, just doing some some getting into the stream before we get uh, into the meat of what I want to talk about and my theories about um, what. Because the reason I I was going to make this a video, but then I was like, I would rather kind of talk about it with y'all, like, I and I and I, I'm in the middle of some video projects. I'm th this next few weeks is very very busy for me. Um, so it's just kind of the nature of things. Um, what's going on? No, no ordinary Gigi. How you doing this Friday evening? Evening where I'm at. Um, how you doing? Um, no, I, I wanted to make this a video, but then I kind of was like, I, I feel like it would be fun to talk about it, talk about it with y'all, and then also talk about HHN stuff too. What whatever kind of comes out of it because there are some things that um are HGM related. What's going on, pup tube? Pup tube? Yeah, pup tube. I don't know. I feel like I should have been able to read that, but um, how y'all doing this Friday evening? Um, pretty nice here in Orlando. Um, weather wise, it's starting to get hot. It's start. It's starting to get hot. What's going on, Cross Gorilla? Um starting to get warm here and summer's coming which i think is fun for these announcements because um you know a lot of people kind of think that summer starts in june july everything in orlando starts early especially everything that comes when it comes to the parks um like halloween i mean we're starting horror nights in august holidays usually starts middle or beginning of november right after halloween mardi gras starts in February and run super late summer begins now, essentially, uh, essentially once spring break happens, it's pretty much summer, summer season for stuff. Um, so yeah, just some, some initial thoughts. Um, have, have y'all seen the universal teasers? We're going to talk about them here if you haven't, but for those who, I know a lot of you guys follow Universal and follow other content creators, um, have talked about them. Um, I know my good friend uh, Kyle from the Horror Fiends did a stream last night on it um, and uh, talking about the the announcement or announcements, the teasers. Um, yes, the summer teasers. I'm just going on case of Quackers. Um, yes, the summer teasers. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if anybody's who's seen them, who hasn't seen them. If you haven't seen them, great. We're going to talk about them in just a second here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff. Jealous of the warm weather. 35 degrees here in Dublin. Shout out to Dublin. It's awesome. But yeah, no, it's 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 nice. Um, 
we've been having really weird, like, it'll be cold some days, and then it will be, or it will be cool, not cold, I mean, obviously it's Florida, so it only gets so cold, but, like, it'll be cool some days, or it'll be cool in the morning, so, like, if you leave, like, to go do whatever, go to school, work, whatever, you'll leave, and it'll be really cool, and then in two hours, it'll be hot. It, it, it does this all the time. Um, starting to get into that weird summer season. What's going on, Chemo Dog? Happy to be – happy that you're part of the chat. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is – for the people that – I'm going to be repeating myself again, but this is just kind of a low-key stream. Just wanted to talk with you all um, because I know I also haven't really been putting videos out. Um, so I want to, like, let you all know I'm still here. I'm still still thinking about all this stuff. So – Let's hop to the the teaser. So for those who were here last stream, we talked about the summer tribute store in terms of the um the table in the Mardi Gras tribute store. So let me I'm gonna go, we're gonna just recap that real quick for those who weren't um weren't here. And so um, for those who weren't here last time, we talked about this table. We talked about the potential of it being a retro-themed summer, um, retro movies, video store, um, like a blockbuster kind of deal, um, potentially with the movie's jaws, um, indicated by a shark in that Mardi Gras tribute store, um, Back to the Future with all a bunch of time references, and Ghostbusters, which has been talked about for HHN, has been talked about for Universal, so it's looking like those three. Um, so those three we've already kind of talked about. We've already um, already talked about. Just kind of breezing over that because this is closed, um, which is really interesting. Because the Mardi Gras store normally, like these the teasers they put in these tribute stores, they, they last a little longer than this one. This one was really only for like a week they had this up. And then the Mardi Gras tribute store closed. Um, to prepare for the summer tribute store. And I went in the park recently. There's been no, like, there's no facade or anything. Like, they're still working on it. Um, but I do think we might be seeing a certain opening time frame, and I'll get into that when we get into the other teasers. But we have a couple messages in chat here. How do you feel about the HHN dates being earlier than usual? My thing is to this, and I, I feel like I don't see them as being earlier because it feels like that same weekend. For example... This is this year's a leap year, so we're already getting one extra day. Um, but also, we have um, last year was September first was the opening night, which was that Friday. Um, they always do it on that Friday. It doesn't really matter what the you know whether it's the first, second, third, whatever. The first uh, Friday of September essentially was what it was. Um, but then it is now it's just kind of happening to fall in August, and I think people are people are. Um, it, it kind of messes with people because they're like, oh, man, it's in August? Yes, but no, because it's at the tail end of August, and it's kind of like in that placeholder of the Friday. However, um, the unmasking the horror, though, is where it's weird because it does start like two weeks. Like, that starts mid-August. So that is – that's where it's a little interesting. I've expressed my feelings on that. Um, I know a friend of the channel, Zombie Chris – I don't know if Chris is in the chat here um, – always comes up with these live streams. Um, but he did a video um, about the early unmasking the horror tour and what the sort of divisive nature of it and and why, you know, it, it, it's really unsure how it's going to work. So, yes, I, 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 I like it being, I mean, I'm obviously someone who loves Halloween Horror Nights. I'm there all the time. Um, I'm always talking about it. Y'all see it. Um, so, I, yeah, get, give it to me as early as you can. I'm not, I don't get burned out as easy as some people do. What typically will happen is you'll have the hype of like an, or speculation announcements, construction, boom, boom, boom. It gets higher, higher, higher. Opening weekend is like the peak, right? Because you're getting to see everything for the first time. You get that peak of like experiencing all the houses, the zones, the shows. And then like it'll stay here. It'll kind of flatline a little bit. Might take a dip as we get deeper into October and, and, that, and that's just me because I go I, – the people that only go once, I get it. The hype is always there, and, I, and I'm always hyped for it. But I'm there I'm there enough to where, like, it can kind of die down a little bit for the people who are frequent fear holders or for um, Orlando or 
Um, I don't know what the multi-night situation is in Hollywood, but for the people that go multiple nights, I don't know if it's frequent fear or something else. You know what I'm talking about? That kind of like dip. You're like, okay, it's kind of like Halloween is here. But then around the time of closing, it comes back up for me. And then by the time it closes, it's back at that hype to where like you're feeling all the feelings about it and you're like, man, it's going away. Um, but um, so I'm, I'm always hyper Halloween Hornet. So I'm, I'm excited for it being earlier, but I know some people are not. Um, we're going to talk about this chemo dog, 25th year of Iowa and the 60th of the trans war. I do want to talk about the trans war because that the AP previews just started yesterday and it looks really cool. Um, so we'll talk about that in a bit when we talk more about anniversaries and stuff. Why I think this is going to be a big summer for Universal. Um, hello, bought my opening weekend ticket. Congrats. I'm going to be buying a Halloween night ticket next week. Awesome. Awesome. Um, get those tickets as early as you can, people. Because because the, the longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to get, the harder it's going to get. It's just going to be general. I know if you have the ability to, for sure, get those tickets as early as possible. Bio Reconstruct has already shared picks on the new tents. Um, crazy how they'll do that in all like five months or so. Yeah, so that was something that I completely forgot that I did want to talk about here because that is very, very interesting for me. I don't have any, oh, let me see if I could quickly pull up a photo. So just filling everybody in for those who don't know. Um, first of all, Bio Reconstruct. Most people know who Bio Reconstruct is because of Epic Universe, right? Epic Universe updates. I'm seeing it through the eyes of Bio Reconstruct. But um, it's looking as if we're going to be getting two new tents for Horror Nights this year instead of the parade buildings because of a new parade coming. Again, we'll talk about that in a bit when we talk about the summer stuff. Um, but it's looking like we are going to be seeing these new tents, and it's just now as of yesterday, that we're seeing these tents start to go up. Um, so these are taken by Buy Reconstruct. Um, so I, I'm not someone who breaks down every little nook and cranny of Buy Reconstruct photos. I know there are content creators who do that, and that's great. I don't, that's just not my thing. But for the sake of the stream and for the sake of y'all who are in the chat here, um, this looks kind of crazy. Um, and I don't know how I feel um, because... I worry, I don't know about worry, but I, I wonder how they're going to make it happen. How they're going to make this, again, in, in under five months, uh, Kimo Dog, we're, we're like a four, four and a half months, less than four and a half months until Horror Night begins. And these tents are going to be built. And with Haunted Houses, are we getting these tents this year? Um, it would make sense because of the parade, but... Maybe we're not. Maybe we maybe we only get one um, this year. Maybe we get both of them next year. Maybe we only get one, and then maybe we use one of the pre buildings. Um, maybe we use another location. Um, you know, really only time can tell. But this is just super interesting. Um, it's super super fascinating here um, because it is just there. There's a lot to break down, and, and it kind of also gives you a cool visual of how big these sprung tents are because. These sprung tents are slightly larger. There's a there's a comparison photo here. I'm trying to find a good comparison photo. I guess you can see in here. This comparison photo, so the ones at the top right corner, those are the ones we have right now. Those are the sprung tents that Dr. Steel, Dr. Oddfellow, Bugs Eaten Alive, Sentence of Destruction from recent years, Wicked Growth, um, the, you know, the sprung tents we know and love. These two at the bottom are the are the pads. Quite a decent bit bigger than it now that's not all just going to be haunted house spaces you can see it looks like they're blocking off for like infrastructure and stuff so it's, that's not all just for haunted houses but these do look a little bit bigger than our sprung tents that we have right now and they can do a lot with those sprung tents as if you've been to the event you know they can fit a lot in those sprung tents so really interesting really fascinating uh it's gonna be something like i said it in the video when i talked about them initially that is something we want to keep our eyes on for the next few um few months for sure um and probably the only way is gonna we're gonna be able to see it is through buy reconstruct so jazzy wolf planning to make out and give out bracelets again so i need to decide what this year's sets are going to say since i make morse code ones maybe do code words if you wanted to do the code words for the houses um i know i don't know i know that's not morse code but if you wanted to do like 
something a little less on the nose. Maybe make the Morse code, uh, not Morse code, the code names for the haunted houses um, that are all all pretty much out there, I think. Um, hey, Emily, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. We're just talking talking HHN now. Um, but I think it's a good time to pivot. We can come back to HHN, but it's a good time to pivot back to Universal, right? So let us see... Um, Code words. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that could be cool. What's going on, Harry? Welcome to the stream. Um, we are just about to start talking about um, these teasers. So we talked about the Mardi Gras tribute store, right? That's really exciting. Then they shared this, this uh, image of these tapes. I'm going to make it bigger so y'all can see it a little better. And we have these tapes here. And uh, with the caption, just found these tapes. Should we see what's on them? And um, we have a lot of things to look at right here, right? Top one says summer 2024. So this is clearly for summer, kind of going with that retro movie store, uh, video store theme we talked about before. Um, and then we have four more tapes. Childhood memories, fun in the water, first day of school, and get the show on the road. What do we think? What do y'all think? I'm oh, sorry. Um... Sorry, I didn't mean to blast you on the um, on the screen. Uh, so, what do we think are these are on these tapes? Um, the time capsule video. So, we're gonna get to the time capsule video. I'm mean, kind of kind of jump around, but I want to talk about the tapes because I'm kind of trying to go. I want to go in order because I feel like they get more revealing as time goes on as to what we're seeing with the the summer store, our summer store, but also summer in general um, at Universal. Um, so while y'all put that in the chat or um, what have you, um, I'm going to start, say my piece. Um, so here we go. Childhood memories. For me, this immediately screams to the tribute store. Because I think about the, the last time they did this. Because for those who don't know, they did do this um, before. In 2022, they did a summer tribute store. It was all themed to classic movies. They had E.T., Jaws, and Back to the Future. Those three movies were in that tribute store. And I remember the perception around that tribute store for me and for many others were like, it's like their childhood come to life, right? You get to go into E.T. and Jaws and Back to the Future and be in these sets and spaces. So that's why it spoke to me, childhood memories. Also, it's the first one in the stack, which may indicate maybe this is will be the first one to appear in the park. Normally, the summer tribute store is open fairly early um, in like mid-June, June-ish. So maybe maybe that maybe that has nothing to do with it, but I do think childhood memories correlates to tribute store. Fun in the water. I think fun in the water has to do with the new lagoon show, which has been um, really the subject of a lot of construction in the park. For those who have been to Universal, really in the past few months, you've noticed that a bunch of the construction in the park is surrounding this lagoon. Um, they're now walled off Central Park. They walled off a big chunk between uh, Transformers and Fast and Furious. Um, you can't go that way anymore. Um, and they're just walling stuff up everywhere. So they're working on this lagoon. They just filled it recently. Um, and uh, so my thinking is that this is they're, they're getting ready. I would love, would have loved for them to do a lagoon show for Horror Nights. I don't think it's happening this year. Maybe next year because they've just spent a lot of time getting the summer one, summer one done. Um, but I think it'll be like the main park one, I guess, because I don't think it'll just be for the summer. I think it'll be for um, the full regular operations. Um, name rumors, we're looking at something. I think it's sensational, sensational something, sensational, spectacular, or something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's that one, right? Boom, here we go. First day of school. My thinking for that is DreamWorks, because DreamWorks is coming soon. Another thing they've been working on for quite a while and if you've been, again, if you've been to the parks in any recent capacity, really since last year, like Horror Nights time, like pretty much from Christmas or holidays, Horror Nights, like that time period, end of last year to this year, they're, they, they've they been making great progress. Um, you can see it from the ground. You can see it from by Reconstruct. Um, it, it's it's noticeable. They made the, the official announcement DreamWorks is coming. Um, so I think first day of school, first day sort of in the playground of Universal, right? It's a brand new land. Um, I think that's something 
potentially also could be something to do with Epic. Um, Epic is getting its big round of announcements this summer. It's probably going to be rounded out by the time the summer ends. Um, and we do have that preview center coming. So maybe that also has something to do with that. But I think it's DreamWorks because they haven't really teased anything other than Epic. Um, and then get the show on the road. That parade I was talking about potentially being uh, literally the show on the road, moving the parade, getting things going. Um, so, and also it looks like we have kind of like this like line graphic, almost looks like one of the DeLorean time travels. So Back to the Future is one of those properties that has been talked about. So um, I could see this going many different ways. I could see these being like double entendres. Um, we have uh, Fun in the Water, maybe thinking of Jaws. Um, but I don't think that's wishful thinking. I think that that's pretty intentional. Um, I think Jaws is coming uh, in some capacity. Um, the parade, the show, the tribute store, merch. I know there's new Jaws merch in the park already. They haven't really talked about it, but it's out there. So I think there'll be more Jaws stuff. I would love for them to reprint the Amity Boat Tour shirt um, they put out a couple years ago. I love that shirt, and I did not buy it, and I, and I regret not, not buying that shirt. I did get the pin, but I didn't get that shirt. Um, DreamWorks Sagoon Show, Lights on Hogwarts Castle, Mega Movie Parade, uh, Lights on Hogwarts Castle. Yeah, I, I, is that back? I don't even know if that's back or not, um, honestly, if they still are doing that. Um, but no, this could definitely be it too. DreamWorks Lagoon Show. These things that we're kind of talking about, and I, and I, and I really just wanted to talk about this to get the ball rolling as we do talk about that teaser, because I like that idea of the, the capsule teaser. That tells us pretty much everything we need to know. Um, but in the water, depths of fear. I mean, the first day of school is the schoolhouse. No, that would be kind of crazy if they did like um, retro HHN houses. Uh, that could be, that, I mean, I think that would be kind of a cool a cool way to do an anniversary. Um, and we could talk about how this might impact HHN too, because I feel like, I don't know. Uh, I know in the nineties seems kind of out of reach for them. Maybe it's like, it seems like it could happen, but it also seems like it may not happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if they try to extend a part of this into HHN felt like home in that tribute store i love that tribute store that's how i feel with the tribute to terror i love that tribute store so much they must be putting fast and furious supercharge oh man they, they don't want to touch fast and furious supercharge harry they don't want to they don't want to acknowledge that it exists that's why they're doing that ride in hollywood they're trying to like be like all right we're gonna we're gonna keep this over here uh sorry guys eventually uh, it is i believe they did confirm that it is closing for a while in august don't get your hopes up though. It's not closing permanently. Although I don't, I don't think it'll last forever. Um, I do think it'll be one that in the coming years, they will look to do something with it because it is quite a bit of real estate, although Napa does sponsor it. So when you have a sponsor like that, rides don't usually close unless they drop out. Um, I just saw Abigail today. Really? How was that? Cause I've been wanting to see it. Maybe I'll see it tomorrow. Um, uh, I, I, I would love to, um, I mean, I said it in the speculation video, I would love to see that come to HHN. Um, Abigail looks like a really fun movie. looks like a really fun HHN premise. Let me know, Emily, without spoilers, uh, preferably, um, it, would that make a good HHN house? Because there's some movies that definitely do. Um, there's some movies that definitely don't. I was shocked that they did Exorcist so well. And granted, it's not as restricted as the original I mean, Exorcist Believer from last year. Um, Exorcist, the original, was just so, like, it's just that one room. Um, but they did some creative things with Exorcist Believer. With the sort of market, and then the forest set, and then all throughout the house, and then seeing the room from different perspectives. So, I feel like that could be kind of cool, because it is, like, all in one house, right? It, it looks like it's all pretty much in one location, for the most part. Ride or die. They chose die. I, apparently, Harry, apparently... Really good? All right. That sounds good. We love to see that. We love to see that. It, it, I've heard nothing but good things. Nothing but good things about it. It's got a great cast. I mean, Catherine Newton, Melissa Barrera, Giancarlo Esposito, um, and, um, and, and you know, being like Ready or Not team and Radio Silence and all that. So it looks like it's, it looks, it looks like it's got good people behind it. Um. So, okay, we talked about, I know, wait, um, time capsule video, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I'm trying to go in the chronology of, um, 
trying to go to the chronology of it. So we have the, 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 the VHS video. Then they dropped this one yesterday. I'm going to play it and this gives us a lot and we can break it down, but yeah, let's just show, let's just show what universal dropped yesterday. All right, that's very interesting, very interesting teaser, and um, one that I, I'm I've been thinking a lot about. Um, so we got to see the Universal Studios Florida logo. Um, I'll pop up. I have all my links prepped because I'm cool like that. But let's pop over. So we have this sort of uh, classic Universal, classic Universal logo here, um, and on on the sort of TV. And then we get these shots. It's like static shots. And then it stops in these with these little icons. Now, Mel's reopened with a similar situation with these icons kind of popping on the TVs. And a lot of people are like, oh, little Easter eggs. But it looks like these Easter eggs could be leading to something. So, of course, this is the flux capacitor. We talked about Back to the Future. So I think this is kind of like uh, the writing on the wall. The Back to the Future is coming uh, in some capacity. Um, and we're scrubbing ahead. And we have a little dinosaur claw here. Of course, last year, Jurassic Park celebrated the 30th anniversary. Um, so I uh, will not be surprised because that's another sort of 90s classic nostalgia movie. Um, and then scrubbing ahead. So we have a bike here. Of course, we talked about E.T. I didn't really talk about E.T. before, but, I mean, E.T. is in, in that list of classic universal. So I would not be surprised if this is something that we do see somewhere. So ET jaw or ET back to feature, and then this one, ghosts. Y'all, I think Ghostbusters is coming, and then that that is a whole question of implications for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, so, um, yeah, Ghostbusters uh, here. Obviously, what else would a ghost represent? I don't think this one was seen at Mel's, so this might be a new icon. A lot of the other ones were seen there, and then, then I believe there were more. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen, um, because, um, y'all can go through and scrub through that, but, but you get the gist, right? We're, we're looking at different icons for different movies, um, that we're going to be seeing. So keep those classic movies in mind. The video is probably not related to HGM. Having all the scare zones vaguely relate to legendary universal rides would be cool. Likely not going to be that. I think this could be really interesting. There are some that I think lend themselves really well. Like, obviously, a Ghostbusters scare zone would be great. I think, like, an Amity Island scare zone, like a shark, like, almost like, um, I don't want to say like zombies, but, like, maybe like a zombie, like, Amity Island kind of thing, like, like you know, mutilated um, corpses and stuff walking around and stuff. I think that could be really interesting um, as a way to do it without doing the shark, because it's kind of hard to do a, a Jaws-themed scare zone with Jaws. Um uh, Jurassic Park. I mean, they did a Jurassic Park scare zone before um, in a house. Um, one of those properties I would love to see come back. Um, don't know if they're ever going to do it because of just uh, just because of the way properties are. And I think that's the big thing with all these is they're trying to make these not they're, they're not necessarily scary. I think 20 years ago, 15 years ago, even probably 10 years ago, they probably could have gotten away with it. But now I don't see them doing it anymore. But, I mean, those three already lend themselves really well to doing um, a scare zone, uh, Halloween Horror Nights experience. But, I mean, I think that would be really cool. Um, but, yeah. Um, I think it's a right Fast and Furious. I'm going back into the chat a little bit. I think it's a right Fast and Furious. Here's my thing with Fast and Furious. It's got a cool cue. And speaking of Fast and Furious, I get, I'm going to side, side tangent. Um, we are seeing some tent work for the house there. I know a lot of people have been talking about Fast and Furious in relation to Horror Nights because, of course, they have a house there. Um, 
and some tent. I'm not going to put the pictures up on here because I don't know. They they look legitimate, but I don't want to be like putting that out there and then Universal comes after me. Um, but you can kind of see it from inside the park, like if you're not even in the line. Um, but yeah, they are working on Fast and Furious. Sorry, little tangent as I was talking about the ride. I would rather talk about that than talk about the Fast and Furious ride. That's how I feel about it. Um, no, it's not... It, I don't think it's the worst ride ever. It, it it might be. It might be. I just think like, I think we, you know, as Universal fans and as theme park fans, we deserve something better. And uh, I'm going to say I've only been on it once, you know? So, um, yeah, that's just my thing about Fast and Furious. Um but it's it's kind of it, it okay here's my thing is if you have a good a group of friends you're going with or a group of people you're going with and you can have fun with it then i think it's a lot of fun then i think it could be a lot of fun like if you ironically try to enjoy it you could you could although i don't think i think there are other rides you can do that with um but it was as bad makes me more motion sick than um rip red rocket um yeah, that, that's 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 very um, that's fair. Um, I I don't ever ride with Bright Rocket, so I I'm, I'm, I can't attest to that. But um, I will say it's not the worst motion sickness ride that I've experienced. For me, I'd say The Simpsons is the worst out of the simulator rides in terms of motion sickness. I I really love The Simpsons. Um, I love the property. The film is great. Like the actual movie is funny. It's very funny. It's very clever. Um, it's very much in line with sort of the the humor of the show. But the 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 motion is just too much. And I think as much as I love Back to the Future and the property and the ride, I think it they just need to go. It's just got to go. The whole building's got to go. Just got it. Tear it down. Build something new. Um, or just gut the building and don't use that system again. Because it's too old, and it just it it it's not up to co- not up to code, not up to standard. I think, especially when compared with other simulator rides like Jimmy Fallon, like um, this big old meme in Mayhem, that I think are um, fine rides, but they don't have the same you know same kind of motion sickness factor for me. Um, let me just I'm gonna. Um, okay, let me check the chat. Sorry, I have to look at something here. Um, I've never rode Fast and Furious. Um, good. Um, I would I would probably just keep it that way. Um, if you if you're at all curious, um, I think that it, it's worth. I did it once, you know, and I did it on the studio tour um, in Hollywood um, when I went there. I you kind of have to. Um, it's kind of baked in um the queue's cool though the queue's fun i, I don't think the queue's the worst um definitely not the worst queue at universal zero vin diesels out of 10 that's fair no family allowed out of fast and furious um i never wrote simpsons I, ne- I don't care for the ip you know what honestly when i first started i did a trip before i got my annual pass when I just went on every single ride um that i because i don't like roller coasters i've said this before i'm not a huge roller coaster guy so I went with my family and we got Express. We had Express because we were staying out there. Um, uh, to his family that, you know, they were like, oh, let's do a trip. Let's stay out there. And, I, and that was at the point where I'd go maybe every few years. Um, I didn't go to Universal all the time, even though I lived pretty close. Um, so anyway, we did a trip where we just did all the rides. This was, I think, right around the time Jimmy Fallon opened. Um, and we did all the sort of simulator rides, all of the all of those sort of attractions. Um, and The Simpsons was the one that stuck out to me because I love the film. Like, I love the movie. I, I felt like the, when you're riding all the simulator rides back to back to back to back to back to back, you you start to feel like, okay, there are these are the standouts for some reason. Here are the sort of meh for other reasons. Um, and that one stood out to me. But I get why people don't like it. I totally get why people don't like Simpsons. Um, isn't it basically given The Simpsons probably go away? Yeah. I don't think the Simpsons are long for this world at Universal. Um, I think 
I think in the coming years, I think once Epic opens, I think that'll be the next project is getting whatever's going on with Simpsons. I mean, DreamWorks opens, Epic opens, I think it'll be Lost Continent and then Simpsons, What whatever goes on with those two areas. It's just me. And I think Animal Actors will also go at that point um, because Animal Actors has been really weird. It's been kind of um, uh, evading every single change that's happened in that area. Um, I know there's another creator, Attraction Ideas, who did who talked about this in his last video um, about like how Animal Actress has kind of, and I never even thought about it that way, but like I was like, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> the Animal Actress has outlived so much in the park for no reason, and I feel like horror makeup shows the same way. Like a horror makeup show and Animal Actors are just kind of like like hiding in plain sight. They're like, don't look at me because if you look at me, I'm gonna close. And horror makeup show closing that will be a, tra a tragedy um, for anybody who. I'm gonna say this right here for anybody who's never been to Universal, or if you're only going, if you're going to Universal during the day, especially if you like horror, horror makeup show, horror makeup show, horror makeup show, horror makeup show, is excellent. It's an excellent show. Um, I wholeheartedly recommend it. Um, it's one of my favorite attractions in the park. Um, it's very easy to get in and out of. Um, it's something to do if you want to just take a seat in the AC. It's next to uh, Bourne. It's in that Hollywood Street um, where the tribute store is. And, and again, Bourne. It's where they put all the Horror Nights merch um, over on that side. So, um, yeah, it's great. It's a great show. Um, I will not be able to go to HHN this year. That is so sad. I'm sorry for you, Emily. Um, but we'll be making videos. So if you want to live vicariously through... Um, the videos, they will be there. What would you like to see take place The Simpsons? Mm. Mm. I, I know a lot of people, and I know, Harry, you're talking about Pokemon. I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan, so I personally, if it was like me, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't really care to do, um, what's going on? I feel like I'm hearing weird noises. I, maybe it's the ghost, Ghostbuster ghosts um, coming after me. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, I think Pokemon is one that I would like, but I, I, it wouldn't be my first choice. I think, honestly, if I were to have my first choice, I would love an expanded DreamWorks, honestly. Like, give me a full DreamWorks land that's not just a few play areas. Um, maybe make, like, a full, like a, I don't know, like a, like a Madagascar ride or a Kung Fu Panda ride or something like that. Let me get, like, a full dark ride and some, like, more themed areas. That wouldn't necessarily be my favorite. It's just that that area is kind of hard because it's literally just on the water there. There's not an, a whole lot of room behind it, and then you're in, impacting HHN territory, um, which don't touch my houses. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly have no clue. A lot of people say bring back Back to the Future. I, I've said this before. I don't really want Back to the Future to come back in that capacity. I would love it to have a full land, like an epic universe size land. Hill Valley. Like, give me a full, give me a full situation um, with that. I, I would rather have that than, than them to just shoehorn Back to the Future back in there, personally. We we'll love a campgrounds kills as cocaine bear house. Now, that would be, I remember that was talked about last year. Like, people were kind of like, hey, are we getting a cocaine bear house? Haha, <laughs> like kind of, uh, but like, are we actually? Um, that would be a fun one. Also, I love Allison Chains. I love that username. Um, I don't know if that's your real name or if that's a, just a username, but either way, I love it. I remember being a kid and going to the horror makeup show. I found American Werewolf really cool, but I was something for some reason. I should have slowed down. Um, I was petrified of the Chucky figure. Yeah, the Chucky figure. I, I see. I was scared a little bit of Chucky as a kid, um, but also. I was like, I was kind of growing up around the time of like Annabelle coming out, and I was a little scared, or like the boy or um, the dead silent, like all those kind of like that era of doll movies. Um, Chucky was already kind of like not scary by the point I was a kid, so like, um, we were already like kind of the, in the bride and seed era. So I, I love Chucky, Chucky's probably my favorite slasher, if you would ask me. Um, right now, at this point in my life, um, I love Chucky, I love how ridiculous he is. Um, I'm loving season three. Um, I have not seen the latest episode, though. So for those who have, don't spoil it. Um, um, let's do... Let's go to, let's go to some of the other comments. Pokemon, Pokemon is taking over the old Spider-Man in Tokyo. Spider-Man ride in Tokyo. Not sure if it's coming here. I don't think it'll take over Spider-Man. Although, 
they wouldn't do that. But Transformers, um, they I don't think they get rid of Transformers though because that's a really big money maker for them. And I don't see where the IP is like. It's not one of those ones that um, the IP is like, okay, time's up. Like they seem to want to work with Universal and Transformers, essentially is a Universal IP, even though it's not. I believe it's Paramount. Paramount or Sony or one of those other companies that owns the Transformers IP. Um, I think it's Paramount because I believe it's Hasbro, right? Or Warner Brother. I don't know. I don't know. But it's not Universal. Um, but yeah, um, I mean that would be that would be something. But I mean, I mean, I, I think Pokemon. I think Pokemon's pretty solid fit for that area back there. Although I would love if they would ever. I, I'm not one to advocate for removal of original IP or attractions. But if they were to get rid of Toon Lagoon in Islands of Adventure, making a Pokemon land there, like a full land, I think you could do a lot with it. Multiple attractions, restaurants, stores, theming on the level of Super Nintendo World. Um, although, because Pokemon, I feel like you're going to kind of stunt it a little bit, even by putting it in, um, even by putting it in, in studios. Um, what about Sonic the Hedgehog? I don't think Nintendo owns Sonic. I think that would have to be a third party, and I don't know how Universal doesn't really like to work with um, third parties. Although I think a Sonic the Hedgehog, Hedgehog roller coaster would be really interesting, like a like a like a Velocicoaster style Sonic the Hedgehog, like super fast. You're doing the the loops and stuff. Like I think that'd be kind of cool with the music. Yeah, that'd be really actually kind of sick. Um, Annabelle creeps me out. Um, yeah, Annabelle's Annabelle's creepy. Annabelle's creepy. Um, it's one of those reasons I think why they want it. Like everybody wants Conjuring to come to um to Horror Nights, um because of Annabelle. Partially, I feel like um, porcelain dolls. I have a fear of living dolls. No, I totally get you. And I never had an experience like that, so I feel, I feel like if I did, I'd be like, hell no, don't no, don't bring them near me. Uh, so I understand. Harry, this comment right here is how I feel. Um, yes, it is not as good as Spider-Man. Yes, it is. It, it's just okay um, as a ride, but I love Transformers. It's my go-to ride at HHN. If I, I didn't ride it, I don't think it, no, I did it opening weekend with Zombie Chris, um, Eddie Tainment, and Losh. We all did Transformers together. And that was the only time I rode it during HHN. But it's my favorite ride to ride during HHM because it is, it's in the AC. I don't have to put my stuff in a locker. That's like number one because I love Gringotts and Men in Black and Mummy, but I don't want to have to put a big backpack in a locker with cameras and stuff. Like, I don't want to have to deal with that. Um, but Transformers is, I think, I think is the only ride that you don't have to have a locker for because even Rocket, you have to have a locker for. So I love riding that during HHM. I know a lot of people, like, I know people have strong opinions of why do you ride the rides during HHM, which I get it. And this is from a pure local perspective where I go enough where I don't have to worry about that. So this is, so don't, don't take my word as, but if you are someone who for one only gets to go one, you know, if you're also only going to universal for Halloween Horror Nights and you maybe want to experience the rides and you maybe not trying to worry about all the houses, like, Hey, I want to do a few houses, but I also want to see what the park is like. I know people like that, like, Oh, you know, I'll do like, three, four, five houses, and then I want to do some rides. I want to do, um, you know, to see the park because, I, you know, a day ticket to Universal is expensive. Um, so I understand that too. Um, you only get a half of the, about like, I don't even say half the rides, like maybe a quarter of the rides fully, mostly in the back or mostly on that kind of side of the park. Um, but I love both rides. Welcome, Chris, into the into the stream. Um, no, I, I I do too. I, I love both rides for different reasons, though. I mean, Spider Man, I think is my favorite. Um, I think that ride is really great, um, effects wise, and there's so much great little little nuggets and details on there um, that I I still find new stuff every time I ride it. But Transformers, I think, is fun too. Um, I think those kind of simulators are fun. I don't love the ones where you just sit and watch a screen. I like the ones where you're at least moving around because at least there feels like some dynamic movement. And if you've watched off of ride footage, um, there's a great channel called Uni Sounds. Um, I'm gonna put them in the in the um, description or in the chat. I should say not description. Um, they have a video of the all the Transformers like off ride footage with um, with on ride footage like putting them together, and you get to really see how the um, 
how the ride works. And it really is kind of complex when you look at it um, versus like you think it's like, oh, it's just a screen ride. But, you know, I think I think that that's I, I think it's I think it's totally fair. Um, Harry, I know you're typing in the chat for your funny story. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. I know there's another question here. Um, if we ever get rid of Marvel, do you think they replace it with DC? Now, this is something I would love to see them do. Unpopular opinion. If they were to ever get rid of Marvel, I would love to see them do a DC land. I don't think it would be a hard transition because that was originally what it was meant to be in the first place. Um, would they do it based on the comics? Would they do it based on any movie version? Would they do it based on the new movies? Um, I think comics will be the easiest way to go to make sure they're timeless. That's kind of the, the blessing and the curse with Marvel superhero Island because they are comic based. So you don't get the MCU. You don't get Robert Downey Jr. And Tom Holland, Spider-Man and, and, you know, um, Mark Ruffalo Hulk. But, you know, once those actors are out and there are new actors playing those characters in the case of Spider-Man specifically, I mean, since, since Islands of Adventure opened, we've had three Spider-Men. And the animated movies. So, you know, like, like we've seen Toby, Andrew, Tom Holland, uh, Spider-Verse, Miles Morales. Like, we've seen all these versions of Spider-Man that have come since. And uh, Superhero Island has stayed the exact same. And I think that there's kind of a fun longevity in that where you have just the class. It's just a classic. You cannot beat Spider-Man mostly for the classic factor. I feel like people come to Universal to see a few things. Harry Potter. In some cases, they want to see dinosaurs. Spider-Man, Minions, um, you know, like like Spider-Man is like for me, I think like the Frozen of Universal because the ride, while it's not the most popular ride, right? Out of Universal, it's not the most popular attraction. It is pretty accessible for the most part. It is 3D. Some people don't like the motion sickness, but it's not a roller coaster. It's a dark ride, and it's also a character that <clears throat> kids, adults, people of all ages love. Spider-Man and just like kids kids love Spider-Man and they just want to see Spider-Man so like that's why I think that ride works and it's also just a great ride um so yeah let's see um let's see some more chats I love talking about this I, I, I started talking about summer teasers but I, I we need to talk about the parks um second last Thanksgiving I went to Universal not going if not knowing with Thanksgiving and the park was barren instead of going on the rides I read Transformers just lead after I can comment on my third to go. <clears throat> you know what? Don't be embarrassed because Transformers is a fun ride. And, you know, I've changed. Why did I chain ride? I haven't chain rode anything at Universal in a long time. Probably ET um, was the only thing. If the park is empty, I'll I'll ride ET back and forth. But um but yeah, so that that's just that's just me. Um, but that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of fun, though. I love that. I love that for you. That uh, that, that you have a love for Transformers. I, I love Transformers. I uh, it's a great ride. Um, kind of unrelated. Kind of related. Have you seen the Hollywood has started building tents for each gen near the Transformers building? It is. It is related. We're talking about Transformers and up on the upper lot. So I don't have pictures for this. Um, I, I I don't have pictures for these at the moment. But yes, I have been seeing that in. Okay, I'm gonna talk as an Orlando person. So correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Mummy has a tent up. T-Pad has a tent up, right? That's the area behind Transformers. And then the H-Lot, one of the H-Lot tents or both? And I know Murdy also said they are working in the Walking Dead building. Um, I think it's called UME or something, um, I think, on the speculation maps. Um, that's how it's referred to. But, you know, the Walking Dead attraction where they had Evil Dead last year. Um, and... That is quite interesting, and I haven't really talked about that as much because it's more Hollywood speculation, and I know there are people that exclusively cover Hollywood. Um, I want to talk about Hollywood um, when I can, so this will be a great time to talk about Hollywood because I know there are a few Hollywood people in here um, or people that just enjoy HHN Hollywood, even though they don't go, um, like me. Um, but we see the facade for H-Lot and for the, what do you call it, um, Mummy Tent are up. Mummy Ten is a huge facade. That is a ginormous facade with what looks to be a garage door, maybe for an Ecto One, maybe. And it would make sense because with Ghostbusters, you need a, a lot or a location that would have a lot of queue. And from what I understand, that has a lot of queue back there because it's like the Mummy queue. And they mean they put the Last of Us there last year. So Last of Us, and then from what I've seen, T Pad, they're trying not to show anybody anything from T Pad. 
Like all the videos that I've seen, they're like, we can't see anything from T-pad. We can see the tent, but we can't see like a facade or anything yet. Um, and they're purposely making it that way. But on the studio tour, you can see one of the H lot tents. And a lot of people have been talking about Freddy, but now Freddy's not rumored anymore. Freddy is out. Out, maybe. That's the nature of speculation season, y'all. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any thoughts on that, on Hollywood, Hollywood speculation, just baseline rundown. But um, I have seen it. Um, I do keep track of of Hollywood. Um, and maybe I'll talk about it in more videos coming up. I, I, I always plan to talk about it, but typically there's so much Orlando stuff that I don't get time to talk about Hollywood because I'm also not trying to make my videos 45 minutes long. Um, so that's why I think the streams are a fun place for that. So, um, but yeah, anybody who's... Hollywood friends, let me know what your, your thoughts are. Um, you know, the Universal still talks about buying Warner Brothers. Yeah, um, I believe that's this month, right? When it's like approved whether Warner Brothers would want to sell. I don't know if, I have no clue if um, they're still doing, um, if that's still happening. Universal's in the place really to do that. Um, I know they're they're trying to keep money tight because obviously Epic's coming, but it's not just Epic, y'all. It's the Kids Resort, um, it's the Horror Unleashed in Vegas, it's the Fast and Furious Coaster, um, it's potential new attractions to Hollywood, it's DreamWorks Land, and whatever's coming to the the parks now. So it's a lot. Um, they're building a lot of stuff. So I don't know if. An acquisition like this, um, because it does kind of remind me of when Disney set out to buy Fox. And I don't know if they're, I still think they're, oh, like, I don't think they've made the money back on Fox yet, um, still. Um, and I hope they're trying to, like, you know, now they're trying to do, of course, doing X-Men, um, X-Men 97. Uh, from what I've seen, has been really great. Um, Deadpool coming out. Um, and then the Alien franchise. <clears throat> they've been really trying to push that. Alien Romulus looks fantastic. So bummed that it's Disney. <laughs> We'll, we'll not get that at Horror Nights because that would be an incredible house um, to get Alien again. Um, as one of my favorite horror films, I'm so sad I missed out on Alien being at HHN. But it is what it is. Um, uh, went to Universal last year for HHN. How was that? Universal Hollywood or Orlando? I don't remember if you've commented this before. Um, Marvel needs to stay at Universal. I love buying new Marvel stuff that doesn't say Disney on it. Um, that's fair. I mean, I know there's a lot of people who think Marvel and Universal is what is the place to be. Um, and I, I think that I, I'm someone who, if they were to keep Marvel, which I think they will, I'm not mad at it. If they were to get rid of it and replace it with DC, hopefully it would be like a DC or something. Like, I, I think they realized that it would have to be something cool to, <laughs> if they were to replace Marvel. Um, but you know, Marvel, I it used to be such a Marvel. I have a Guardians of the Galaxy poster back here. That's just because I like that ride a lot. And I love the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Um, it's probably my favorite Marvel thing um, that I've seen. Um, I used to really follow Marvel a lot. Now I don't anymore um, just because. Um, stop kind of interesting me. Um, and I found other things to be interested in. And it's just a lot to keep up with. Um, Freddy is out. Maybe, maybe Freddy is out. Maybe Freddy is here maybe friday's coming we don't know we don't know we need someone to cover hollywood keep me updated backlog builder because i i i know y'all have a more expertise on hollywood than i do i'm i'm, I'm looking at it from an outsider perspective purely kind of hope they at least buy the cartoons in dc from warner brothers cartoons i think would be great because i'm gonna tell it like this they don't really utilize the cartoons that much merchandising but that's about it um because i went to the i don't know if i've said it before in the stream but i went to the warner brothers studio tour when i went to california we went to universal um one day and then the next day we went to warner brothers studio tour um it's a great great experience for those who have never been if you're like a like to, it's a total tourist thing but if you are a tourist going to california going to la um warner brothers studios is fun there are three Three things, and I'm going to put this up here because this is kind of true. Three things that they really focus on with Universal, um, or not with Universal, with Warner Brothers. Um, DC, they love DC, they love Harry Potter, and they love the classic, like other like classic Warner Brothers movies. There is a very strong absence of any cartoon stuff. They have one room, um, or 
yeah, like one room, and it's mostly just Looney Tunes, but it really isn't even that much. I was shocked at how little Looney Tunes stuff they had. Oh, and Friends. They have a lot of Friends stuff, too. But I was shocked at how little Looney Tunes, had like Hanna-Barbera, even like Cartoon Network, like really any of that. Um, and granted, it's not like the biggest thing ever. Um, but it it is something that I that I'm very curious if they were to ever – if they were to ever do it, I think Universal could do a great job with those properties um, and really utilize those characters more than Warner Brothers is. Um, although DC, maybe, because they do like to... I know that Warner Brothers is endlessly complicated because of Six Flags and all the other parks. So I personally think they're going to do the same thing they did with Harry Potter and Nintendo. I agree. I think um, right now it's looking like Pokemon and Studios, Zelda and Islands, and um, Mario... Mario, Donkey Kong, and Friends in Epic. Um, I do wonder if they have the Weekend Bar and the Peacock Bar back. Is that the next thing for HHN theme bar experiences? I wonder. See, okay, I'm gonna plug your your um I'm gonna plug your channel a little bit, Chris. Um, Chris did a video on a like the what's the potential of like a Mel's die-in experience? Um, great video. Um, but I, I love that idea of like, because the taste of terror was not really a success very much at all. Um, it looked interesting enough for the people that did it. It's kind of one of those weird little things that you're like, oh, this is kind of a cool thing looking forward. I don't think they'll do it again. Um, I hope they bring back character dining, but like, other than that, like right character dining and then the taste of terror. And this is kind of them, maybe them dipping their toes into more experiences. Obviously we had the peacock bar as well, as you mentioned, um, the potential of a weekend bar, um, as well as the, um, you know, the weekend bar peacock bar. Um, and I just wonder what the future is for dining because I feel like they're really trying to elevate dining and I don't think it'll be too long before we see, an elevated character dining experience, maybe a, maybe something like that with a bar, like you're saying with the weekend. I don't know. I think that theme dining, theme bar slash dining experiences, um, especially also with the Coconut Club in um, City Walk. And I think that's another one that um, is kind of an indicator. I think could be an indicator of what they're doing moving forward. And I hope where I hope they expand this is the hotels because they have the Swizzle Bar in. Cabana Bay, but it's not really like they, they have some HHN drinks, they have some decorations, but it's not like, a, like an experience, you know. But let's see. Universal ends up buying OBB. Sorry if my mic keeps having these like audio pop ins. It, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, if one of those ends up buying the BB will Peacock and Max end up merging. I don't think that it'll necessarily merge. I think. I think if Warner Brothers were to end up with Universal, I think it would be in more of a negotiation thing. Like I don't, I, I don't know if it would be like a Universal buys them out because I don't, I don't see where that's a smart idea right now for for Universal. Warner Brothers is probably a great idea because they're kind of having a real tough time uh, financing stuff. But I don't see where that if them buying it is necessarily the smartest idea for Universal. Um, we talk about the theme parks now that's a different thing like they can always negotiate theme parks i mean they did it with harry potter they were able to negotiate theme park rights and have that pretty long standing of course they've had stuff at hhn um different things like beetlejuice evil dead right it's not always the most the bestest um but you know they have had stuff before so i think it, i don't know if it would be them merging as much as it would be like you know them just having a a relationship together versus like one owning the other that's just me. I'm not a market analyst, guys. I'm 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 just a somebody who likes talking about haunted houses. Um, so lots of comments for the weekend. This pretty odd having a weekend bar is only going to be open Saturdays and Sundays. That's what we love to see. The weekend jokes, awesome. Um, you see that the Donkey Kong expansion in Tokyo got delayed. Um, I hope this doesn't mean the Epic Universe will be delayed. Now. I I don't think Epic um, I don't know if Epic Universe is going to be delayed past 2025. But I don't know if Epic Universe is going to open in summer like everyone's thinking. Also, I'm gonna change my light a little bit. There we go. Purple light was getting a little was getting a little weird with the camera. 
Okay. Um, I don't think Epic Universe will open in summer necessarily because they removed it from all the advertisement. And I know they've been doing a lot of testing and construction looks like it's going great, but in a little over a year, the whole park being ready, I don't know. I think I think it's more likely maybe at the end of 2025. I do think they're going to keep it in 2025, though. I don't think they're going to, because they've really said 2025 is when it's happening. They didn't say when in 2025. And I think that's why they're kind of doing these rollouts now to say like, okay, we got Celestial Park, Dragons, Harry Potter, Dark Universe. And then by the time we get to the end, maybe we'll know what an uh, opening day might look like versus um versus what else um sorry just got a message there um considering the 25th anniversary of ioa okay let's let me pivot to that because i do want to talk about the 25th anniversary of islands of adventure um so for those who don't know it is the 25th anniversary of islands of adventure and between the parks and myself we have things coming so um let's start with this um, really cool merch they dropped for the 25th anniversary, it's kind of in line with park stuff. So I feel like it's a cool, cool pivot. Um, of course, we did talk a lot about Spider-Man. Um, Spider-Man is on here. Um, and of course, we also have Cat in the Hat, Dudley Do-Right, the Dueling Dragons for fans of HHN. There your dragons are. Um, and then um, Jurassic Park. And they have this in pins. They have it in a hoodie. They got it in uh, cups um, and what have you. So they have it kind of everywhere um so i think i think this merch is great and i think it does pivot i'm going to pivot back to talking about the 90s a little bit i know there's some comments about epic so we're going to we'll, we'll keep talking about that but i i made this tweet about and i have this button here so this is the new pass holder button for next month for may um they're back I'm very happy to see pass holder buttons back but look at this design Parting since 1999 with a lot of the same icons we're seeing, um, as it says in the tweet, Lighthouse, Julian Dragons, Ken the Hat. Those are the icons we're going to be seeing, I think, in Epic Universe, or not Epic Universe, Islands of Adventure um, for the 25th anniversary. Maybe we get them to bring back stuff. Maybe they bring back some characters. Maybe they bring some limited edition, like photo ops or food or something, um, some kind of something for the event. Um, it looks like they do want to celebrate it, so... That's exciting to see, but like this feels very 90s. Kind of goes a little bit with the stream background as well, too. A little bit like that 90s, 90s vibe. So 90s maybe is going outside of uh, Universal. We talked about the parade, and we talked about the potential properties for the tribute store, and we can talk about that capsule here in a second, but it looks like it might be going outside. So that brings me back to like, what's this for, for this, uh, for Islands? What's for HHN? We did see that 90s merch come out for HHN, 90s inspired merch. Is that the vibe they're going with this summer? Is that the vibe they're going to go with for the rest of the year? Um, that's the question that we have to that we have to pose with ourselves. Um, we have some chats here. Holiday 25. Oh, yeah. Holiday season 2025 will be crazy talk. Um, I don't know if it'll be holiday. Mm, I don't know if it'll be holiday season, but I mean, I feel like it would. But then I wonder because the other hotels are already open. Um, Stella Nova and Terra Luna, got them right. Um, Stella Nova and Terra Luna are already open um, for booking. They're not open quite yet. They open at the beginning of next year. But there, you can book a, a room right now. Um, if I if I wanted to, I could book a room right here on stream. Um, so uh, they they're already open. So I wonder how if they want to keep those open for a full year before the park opens because part of the reason you're going to stay there. Is proximity to the park um but who knows um who knows that i mean it could also just be hey we open these to meet our capacity so we can you know have more um room in the in the in the um what do you call it uh in the hotel sort of range um so perhaps um maybe epic will open in waves i don't think it'll open in waves i think they want to have everything but i do think there'll be multiple phases i think there'll be new attractions there are plenty of expansion pads that are available. So I think there'll be new stuff, but I don't think, I think what we're seeing, like what they showed us, the lands we're seeing is what we're getting on opening day. Um, love the merch. I love the merch too, Chris. Um, I, I, I love the merch. I'm, I'm 
gonna have to put the pin on that board back there. Um, dueling dragons representation. I know people more people who've ridden the Dudley Do Right ride than know. The only reason I know is because I the Brendan Fraser movie, which is like really weird. Um, that that's my exposure to Dudley Do Right. I believe that was Brendan Fraser that was in that movie. Um, they did a live action remake in the '90s or in the early 2000s of um, it's like they it's like they did with a lot of cartoon. I think Rocky and Bullwinkle. I don't know if they were in that movie or if they had. I think they had their own movie, Rocky and Bullwinkle, who are also friends in Toon Lagoon, who we had no mention anymore. I don't know if it's because Universal doesn't own them or, but I never hear about them at all. I remember the Triceratops Encounter will be back. I think they need to bring Triceratops Encounter to Orlando in the way that they have it in Hollywood. Um, I don't think they'll build out an attraction for it or anything because, I mean, that's Velocicoaster now. Um, but I think. Um, I think that they will, they will maybe, I mean, I could see them rolling out something like this, although I don't know, first of all, where they would put it. Um, second of all, how they would like manage it. I feel like that would be islands is already definitely a choke point in that park or Jurassic park. Sorry. Is a choke point in islands. So I don't know how they would do that because like, you know, Hollywood has it off to the side. So it's like, well, okay, you can kind of be out of the way, but like in Orlando, you're kind of like. There's stuff everywhere. They take Merlin and Blizzrock and Pyrock from HHN. That would be kind of cool. Let's reuse those costumes and bring them out as a meet and greet. Or maybe do like a little show. Like a little, like not like a big show, but like a little, little like, um, like how they do the Death Eater show. Like, you know, sometimes they'll do like little Death Eater encounters. I think that'd be kind of cool. Like an after dark thing. Like have Blizzrock and Pyrock come out because they have the glowing chest pieces. That'd be kind of incredible. Um, Praying from Art the Clown experience. I don't know if Art the Clown's coming this year. Um, this one's a really weird. This is such a strange uh, IP um, that a lot of people are talking about. But maybe, maybe once Vegas opens, um, maybe once Terrifier 3 comes out, we'll see. Um, but I don't think it's coming this year. Maybe next year, though. Um, but yeah, Art the Clown's at the top of a lot of people's attention when it comes to HHM, for sure. Not my thing, personally, but I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, sad they didn't use Popeye. But glad for more Jay Ward representation. I think part of the reason they didn't use Popeye was I don't like again, I don't know what whether they own Popeye. Like whether they have the okay, own to use on like merchandise. Because obviously they don't own Spider-Man and they don't own um that I guess they do technically like have rights for Cat in the Hat, um, because they have like Illumination does all the new Seuss movies. Um, but Spider-Man definitely they don't have that's they don't own that. Um, so maybe, or maybe they just wanted to choose Dudley Do Right because that's, I think, the more popular of the two attractions. Um, I think Popeye is the more popular of the two characters, but the attractions, I feel like people like Dudley Do Right a lot more. I don't know. Let me know in the chat. What do y'all think about Dudley Do Right or Popeye? Um, I don't love water rides. I like Popeye though. Popeye is a fun one. Um, I, I like the more like the rapid rides, like than the roller coaster, like. Again, I'm not a big coaster person. I've said this before. I said it earlier in the stream, but I'm a big coaster person. Um, but I like Popeyes for the sort of rapid. I, I, I was just going to ride it last time. I think I'll probably ride it soon. Um, was everything open on day one? I believe so. All of the ones that, okay. I believe it was, I believe everything that we know. So Seuss Landing, all those rides, not the the trolley train. I didn't open until later. Um Seuss Landing, so Cat in the Hat, and all the stuff there, and all the ride Cat in the Hat being like the major ride there. Um, Lost Continent, I believe, yes, Dueling, Dueling Dragons, and all that Merlin Wood area. Poseidon's Fury was different, but I believe it opened. With, I'm pretty sure it opened with the park, but I've no, but it was a different show. It was they changed it in a couple years after it opened, um, and then Sinbad, and then um, Jurassic Park, obviously without Velocicoaster, but um, everything else in Jurassic Park believe i believe that opened with the park and then toon lagoon as well as marvel marvel is pretty much untouched other than the them retooling hulk and basically pulling the track out and doing new track um it's pretty much the same like it's the same theme like it's still a hulk, hulk coaster um um it's because art the clown has adopted your whole icon he's right there with jason freddie michael that's why i find it hard to believe that art won't be there i I think it's it is a debate though because I don't again I'm not sure 
for one, I think that they would want to do it, but I, I hope, I hope if they do it, they're just, they do it well, but also, you know, cause they, they would want to do it by their standard, obviously, cause th- there's some stuff they will not show in a Horror Nights house, regardless of what Horror Nights is. There's some stuff that art does that we will not put in a house, um, because of the audience that comes to Horror Nights nowadays. Um, but also it's like, you also don't want them to nerf him too much because then it becomes like, Oh, well, what, what's the point? Um, and I feel like, like, I feel like the only thing that's kind of come close was saw. And I, and I don't, from what I've heard, I never did that house. From what I've heard, saw was not that great. Um, so, I mean, in terms of like gore factor, um, gory IPs are like kind of shocking IPs coming. Cause like Michael, Freddie, Jason, they're great, but nowhere near that when it comes to gore and what they can and can't show at least yeah at horror nights it's just not near the same category um i am not a gore hound i don't really like the the part is part of the reason why because i'm not really a gore guy i don't love super crazy gore like a two to score um i think some gore is fun like i think like like there's some there's some over the top gore, but there's some that i'm like okay like that's just me um, but I think art's a great character for HHN. I think like, like this, they won't because it's gory, but I think art, I think art is such a fun character to pull. Like if they were to have him running around like a, like a peacock bar or something, like I think that would be a lot of fun. Him doing like the little mime impressions or in a, in a house or in a zone or something would be a lot of fun. But I don't wonder if, um, I don't, I, I don't know if they'd be able to pull off the gore. The character's great though. Like the character's a lot of, it's, he's funny. Um, he's a lot of fun. He's, he, he is becoming like a horror icon because he's such a, a, such a character like Michael or Jason or Freddie or any of the people you name, but he's not there yet. Um, as, as Harry's saying, he's not there yet. Um, that's why I said maybe after Terrifier 3 coming out, but I don't know. I feel like there are a lot of horror movies too that Universal just won't touch. I mean, there's a list I'm sure that's out there that they will never, uh, they will never do them. And you're there just just wondering. Um, there have been rumors of the Terror Tram from Hollywood being themed this year as an anniversary experience. Um, and I'm all here for it, excited to see what they're cooking. So, yeah, I like that idea. I've heard that. Um, I did like that idea of them doing a Terror Tram anniversary theme. Um, because, you know, I think that. I think that the Terror Tram, um, because they don't really do anniversaries over in Hollywood, like how we do in Orlando. They don't have icons and think like, I, Murdy does not like to call them icons, right? Like, it's not like the same icon status that we see here in Orlando. So, um, I think that it will be really interesting for them to do a Terror Tram anniversary Um, Maybe do some Alfred Hitchcock stuff, maybe some classic monsters, maybe some past terror tram themes, like maybe do a little Chucky bit or some purgers or whatever, like maybe a history of the terror tram Um, or like maybe theme to classic universal horror. That could be kind of interesting, Um, but um, I don't know. Again, I, I love what they're doing for the 60th anniversary, though. I love all the stuff, adding Doc Brown to the tour, adding, um, you know, uh, more extended Norman Bates and bringing the Psycho House back and and doing, um, you know, the, the new photo ops and the Glamour Trams. All that is fantastic. So maybe if they were to do something like that, um, I think it would be kind of cool. Or maybe even go a little meta with it and have it be like Backlot Murders, but like, you know, Universal. I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. Uh, but no, like Hollywood doesn't really do Milestone. Uh, years because you don't you don't count like Hollywood doesn't really count the years um are you saying nope it's you don't agree or nope it's in the film I don't know that wasn't intended to be a joke but it was a little funny um but yeah no they they've they've um I mean that's another one too like I mean they ha- that's kind of a fixture on the tour um and I know it's kind of a big part of the terror time and has been so I so like it, let's just do like a full history of universal horror start at the beginning I know a lot of people don't like the classic monsters or they they're tired of the classic monsters. Let's just do classic monsters and um, let's do a full on classic monsters, Alfred Hitchcock, go to the slashers, go to more modern universal, maybe some Blumhouse stuff and then end off with Nope and Jupiter's claim. I'm just going to drop that one right there. Universal. That one's free. Um, Yeah. 
I don't know. What do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that one? While y'all, while y'all sort of discuss that or think about it, um, I do want to, I do want to pivot to the capsule video because I'm not going to be on here for a whole lot longer. I don't want to, I don't really, again, this is kind of just a chill low key stream in the middle of some videos. Um, and uh, so, but yeah, for, for, for the going back to sort of the retro universal, um, there's this comment. Ooh, where is it at? Oh, it's all the way up here about the capsule um it i can't find it but it was all the way up there capsule and it's basically this little video that universal has put that basically uh showcases this time capsule and uh, we could talk about it from there um what we see so let me show that real quick and then we'll we'll get to discussing we found this old box buried in the office ignoring this sign What do we think of that? Basically tells us everything we need to know. Um, first question here, how soon do you expect the summer editions? I'm thinking I'm thinking June because, okay, I didn't say this in the second video, the TV video. Um, there's the date April 29, which I think April 29 is going to be the when they announce all this stuff officially. So expect on April 29th a video from me talking about what's coming officially. But I think we're going to get a big drop. I think, I think because Epic is, so Epic's on a, it seems to be an every other month basis, right? January, end of January, we got the first announcement. End of March, we got um, the second announcement. Beginning of April, we got the, um, we got the uh, Halloween Horror Nights announcement. So um, the, I literally just lost my train of thought. Um, no, so I'm thinking at the end of this month, we're going to get our universal summer announcement. Um, and then at the end of next month, we're going to get, um, Epic Universe. Maybe at the top of next month, we'll get another HGN announcement. Maybe that's going to be kind of their pattern. Although they don't want you to have, they won't, they don't want you to know. Um, they don't want you to know what they are cooking, you know, but, um, yeah, uh, Slimer. I mean, the, the green slime with who should we call about this? Ghostbusters, baby, is happening. Ghostbusters, come on now. There's no way they don't do Ghostbusters. Um, if for Horror Nights or for Fort of the Park, for both. So that's what I'm thinking. If they were to do this announcement at the end of April, top of May, Ghostbusters house coming to HHN. It's just my theory. Um, and then it would give us something to munch on <clears throat> for the next few weeks. Give us an official house. Because I don't see any speculation maps coming until we get an official house announcement. Usually, um, uh, speculation map creators want to um, put, um, I feel like they would want to have a house like confirm. And last year, we had the luxury of having Chucky confirm uh, the, on the closing night of the event before. But... Yeah, I think that I think that I think that's what we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see this. Um, but yeah, Slimer is it's gotta be Slimer. I know some people are saying Nickelodeon. I don't think so. I think it's definitely gonna be um, I think it's definitely gonna be Ghostbusters. Um so what, what do we see in there? Saw a bunch of different stuff. We saw let's going back to sort of the non-retro things, we saw um onions, typically regarded as something associated with Shrek. Shrek is coming to DreamWorks. Noodles, associated with Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda is also coming to DreamWorks. Um, and uh, we have Glitter, Trolls. Trolls also coming to DreamWorks. So DreamWorks is coming. They already said this summer, so I'm sure we'll get an announcement opening day for DreamWorks. Um, but then we have the retro stuff. So we have the red hoodie, which is worn by Elliot in E.T., um, which is great. Um, good to see some E.T. stuff again. I love E.T. Um, the Teeth. 
Now, the teeth is the interesting one because a lot of people are saying, I know there's some people saying Jaws, but I've heard also talk about Jurassic Park um, because Jurassic Park was in that video. I think these are shark teeth, though. Um, from what, from my limited experience um, living in Florida, those look like shark teeth. Um, so I think that those will be um, for Jaws. Um, so we have the hoodie. We have the, the clock, Back to the Future, Time. We've talked about Back to the Future quite a bit. Um, so Back to the Future, Jaws, E.T., um, Ghostbusters. Now, what's up with that phone? Now, it it looks like this could be E.T., but I, why, I don't know why they would do this. The, I, I thought this maybe could be another nod to Ghostbusters because of the phone. You know, I thought it was like, I thought it could maybe be a Janine's phone, um, you know, that she gets the calls uh, in Ghostbusters HQ, but it's not. It's a different phone. Um, this one's more, this one almost, this one's like a cordless phone looks to be, um, or, or it's, or it's more modern, um, cord phone, uh, like, um, I don't know how you call those kind of phones, but looks a little more like it bleeds into more of the nineties feel than the eighties, um, which was the theme of the last store. So maybe we're bleeding a little more into the nineties. Um, but also I thought potentially this may have to just do with the retro, retro aesthetic like the um like the video store like you know calling in um maybe but i don't know i, I feel like that would be kind of weird because it was kind of thrown in the middle of the video but what do you all think about the phone the white phone um it does kind of look like et like et's phone some people have been saying um and uh you know i'm not going to i'm not gonna start this because i know it's probably not going to happen ever but um but come on come on that's her phone that's that's the phone are we getting scream no i don't think so but y'all it looks like the same phone or a very similar phone if not the exact same one and so I, I feel like that I feel like that's kind of teasing us. It would be the craziest reveal out of anything if it were to be. I think it would be the biggest. I would shut up. I would shut up about HHN. I would not say anything about IPs. I would not say anything about anything being lackluster. I would say, uh-uh. <laughs> I would say not saying any negativity but negativity about this event. If we were to get scream, it won't happen. But if, if it were to happen, I would also scream with joy. Um, but I think that that tribute store, for, tribute store for the parade. Yeah, I didn't think it. Yeah, I don't think it's anything. It would be crazy if it was. Crazy tease. But I don't think it would be. Uh, but I have seen people talking about it. And I did want to bring it up um, just for fun. I know y'all would appreciate that. Um or not uh, be upset about it. <laughs> be reminded how sad um, a world without Scream at HHN is. But I mean, you know, it's it's not out of the question. It is out of the question. What am I saying? Um, I'm just I'm just being being very delusional right now. But that's all I have when it comes to this. Big updates coming. Um, what's what are we at? Let me look at my calendar real quick. We are on the 19th, so the what 10 days? So next, not next Monday, but the Monday after next. Um is the 29th of April. We're gonna be seeing what we get to see for summer. Um and I know that this is not, again, I was not expecting everyone because it's not HHN. Um, it, it tangentially connected to HHN, but not really because of Ghostbusters. I do think what we're seeing, we could be seeing a really cool cross tie with Ghostbusters being at the event. Um, it, it seems like Ghostbusters is pretty much coming. I think I feel like everybody kind of, right? I think we're all kind of in agreement that we, most of us think that Ghostbusters is happening this year. Um, that would be a Big shocker if it wasn't. Um, but then again, it is speculation. It is rumor. 
It is that time of year where everything is up in the air. Nothing is concrete. Um, so don't get upset as we I just kind of started, you know, maybe drifting towards the Freddy thing. I know some people are, are going to be upset about that. Um, <laughs> uh, Harry always coming in with the jokes all the time. Uh, love this. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's the, that's the, uh, maybe it's one of the Ghostbusters is actually Ghostface in the, in the new canon, in the new movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, big things coming for summer and I'm going to be documenting, um, documenting what's happening for the summer. Um, for y'all, um, videos, tribute store video I want to do, um, obviously new parade show. I'd love to do that all. I'm going to do more vlogs. Once we start getting Hornets construction, it's basically going to be me back out in the park. I don't really like to do videos out in the park that often, but I do like doing them for HHM because it's, you know, there's like new stuff all the time. And plus I know y'all love HHN updates and construction updates. So, um, those are coming also IOA videos next month. Um, that's really going to be a big thing next month. I'm working on my rebooting the icons video. I've, I've talked about this before. I'm still working on that because that's a, that's a video I want to get right. Um, but um, IOA, IOA for sure next month. I have a few videos planned out for that one, and then um, and then stay tuned to the channel because I do have some new some new stuff. Big thing coming that is I'm working it out, but it's 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 coming soon. Um, it's things that people have asked me about. Something people have asked me about um, that I'm going to be adding soon. Um, so leave it at that. But, um, anyway, have to do that part of the stream. I always talk about what's coming, um, and stuff that may or may not be coming soon. Um, I know I asked before, are you going to do this version spec one map comparison to last year's? Um, I know you're saying like three things. So once, so you're saying once the official lineup gets revealed, or am I going to compare it back to version one? Is that what you're asking? Cause I can do that. Um, and that could honestly be a stream. That could be a whole stream in itself um, of just comparing the maps and, and how the maps evolve. Um, but yeah, let me know what you're, what you mean by this, if, or if it's comparing spec one 2024 to spec one 2023, although I don't know how you would really compare that because they're two different event years. Um, but if you would compare them, cause I do like to look at like when, when the official map comes out, looking back at the original spec map and being like, this was right, or maybe this was swapped with this, or this location was incorrect, but kind of mapping it out quite literally. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that I'm going to sort of wrap it up here. Um, it was fun chatting with y'all about what's coming for Universal. Stay tuned to the channel for new stuff. Um, new stuff is coming uh, soon. Um, I am having a very busy next few weeks, really next whole month, but I, I plan on getting some videos out because I want to get some videos out, non HHM videos, but also some HHM videos before we get into the thick of construction and announcement season. Um, and, uh, yep, this was more of a low key one, but thank you all for coming through. Um, and, um, yeah, hope y'all have a good night and I'll see y'all in next video. Um, yeah, take care everybody. Deuces. Have a good one.